Stephen Jaroge Solomon, and Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. So I'm a son in this IKZ, but I minister mainly at the main campus. I belong to the Miracle Service Ministry team, uh, among others, but I also happen to be the zone reader for a zone called the Royal Suburb. So, and I know there are quite a number of people. Royal Suburb, what to see? in the host. Musimame, you the host. Come on, Badu, Munashikiria, Pande. You see, host, Musimame. Royal Suburb. Yeah, you're the Royal Suburb. Yeah. Mbariku, what are you going to pick a picture? Sasa, Mbariku. So, we give God all the glory. So, um, remember, on that, we were here celebrating DCIKZ uh, 40th anniversary. And there is a prophetic word that came forth for each one of us, for us as a ministry, for us as families, for, his, for us even as individuals. And I remember there are, uh, one of the things that, there are many declarations that were, were done, but I remember we were reminded that after 40, there is a 41. And there are new frontiers, new territories without limit. New frontiers, new territories without limit. And today, uh, I would like to, uh, uh, to, uh, my, my, to uh, my, my someone has a heading, set up for, new t for frontiers, new territories. Set up for new uh, frontiers, new territories. And maybe you may be asking yourself, what is this you are calling a frontier? And uh, a frontier is a line or a bounder uh, separating two countries. And that's why when we are talking about international crimes, you usually say that uh, international crimes uh, knows no frontiers. They cut across. <coughs> a frontier is also a, a bounder uh, between what is known and what is unknown. That's why, for example, when it comes to knowledge, knowledge continues to evolve. And if, you, for example, there is a new field of knowledge, you are saying that uh, you, uh, there is a frontier of knowledge because it is, uh, uh, it, it's been explored. A frontier represents uncharted territory. It could be a remote piece of land or a new field of study. But if someone calls it a frontier, you are challenged to exploit. So we are saying if there is a frontier for us, then we need to exploit. Then when we talk about territory, territory is a land which is controlled by a particular country or ruler. For example, Kenya is a territory. Uganda and Tanzania and many others are territory. So uh, these two terms we'll be using a frontier, and that's why we usually say a Trukana is a part of the northern frontier because it's at the border of Kenya and uh, Uganda. When you talk about Busia and all, or even Garissa, Garissa we say it's the eastern frontier. So I would like as we, we go through three main key scriptures, I may quote others, but these are the main ones. And the first one is uh, Genesis 13, 14 to 17, in the New Living Translation. Uh, Genesis 13, 14 to 17, and it says, After Lot had gone, th the Lord said to Abraham, Look as far as you can see. Look as far as you can see. In every direction, north and south, east and west. I'm giving the, all this land as far as you can see. Uh, uh, yeah, as far as you can see um, to you and to your descendants as a permanent possession. And I'll give you so many descendants that like the, sun, the, the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. Verse 17. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I'm giving it to you. But let's see now Joshua 13, verse 1. Joshua 13, verse 1. Now Joshua was old, advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, You are old, advanced in years, and there remains very much Rand yet to be possessed. For example, there is a lot of things that happened in this ministry for the last 40 years. We may think that we need to settle. But the Lord is reminding us, just as uh, he reminded Joshua, there, there, there is yet a lot of land to possess. There are new frontiers to explore. There are new territories that we need to, uh, uh, we need to possess and occupy. Uh, and, uh, and uh, maybe for, for in, in Joshua chapter 12, there, uh, there is a recount of how 
two, two and a half tribes of Israel, they were given a uh, ranch on the west of Jordan. But now they were on the west of Jordan, but they had not possessed land. And that's why the Lord was coming to them so that now he could remind uh, Joshua that also the nine and a half also needed now also to be given their inheritance. Uh, and the, that scripture is uh, Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 4. Isaiah 54, uh, verse 1 to 4. It says, Seeing, O barren, you who have not born. And when he's talking about uh, the barren, you know, uh, uh, and then they are being told to sing. They are not singing uh, songs of sadness, but things of, uh, uh, songs of joy. Because uh, the second uh, sentence says, break forth into singing and cry aloud. I know they are not, not the cry of pain, but because of the, cry, uh, of, the, of the cry of joy. So they are tears of joy and they are tears of sadness <clears throat> because of what God is going to do. You who have not labored with, uh, with the child, for more are the children of the uh, desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. It's the Lord who says it. Enrage the praise of your tent, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, redden your cords, and uh, strengthen your sticks. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations, and make the uh, desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame, for you, you will forget the shame of your youth, and you will not remember the reproach, your windowhood anymore. So uh, these are the three main scriptures that you'll be uh, going through, and I'll be referring to them uh, now and then. But for us as DCIKZ family, the Lord has continued to be gracious uh, to us. And we can look back in faith and in gratitude and testify of the goodness and faithfulness of God in the last 40 years. Uh, but the Lord is not yet through with us. There remains very much land yet to be possessed. There are new frontiers to be explored. There are new territories for us to possess and to occupy. And this is so even for us as individuals, for families, because our, cho our, our God changes not. But uh, our God changes not, but he specializes in lifting us from one level of glory to another, to the honor of his holy name. He remains God of limitless possibilities and miracle surprises that cannot be counted. And when I have a hard time to speak to my children, even from when they were young, I have always reminded them the, about the God that we believe in. And I've always reminded them that the God we believe in is God the creator. God who can make something out of nothing. Unlike you and me who require something to come up with something. So myself, I usually say that he's God of limitless possibilities and miracle surprises that cannot be counted. He is our song changer. He's the one who gives us new songs, songs of victory. But we need to know between receiving the promise, like the way we received the prophetic word, and the fulfillment of the promise, there is a process. And that's why this, uh, uh, this day I'm here uh, to tell us what uh, maybe we need to do in this process so that at the end of it, we'll come out with the songs of joy to celebrate the doings of the Lord. And uh, I'm calling them expectations, expectations for us as we pursue the promised new frontiers and new territories. Expectations for us as we pursue the promised new frontiers and new territories. Remember, we were told they are with no limits. And the first expectation, we need to be, to be keen to listen to the Lord and obey his instruction. We need to be keen to listen to the Lord and obey his instruction. God has always continued to speak in his people, even in past generations. Uh, and we see that he spoke to, to Abraham, he spoke uh, uh, to Adam and to many others, uh, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, Joshua. And even here, he has continued to speak to us through uh, uh, our bishop, our mom, and the rest of the ministers here. And even those visiting, like the way we had a, a visiting minister who spoke to us. But listening is one thing. But do we obey the instruction? Because you listen, but we, are you obeying? That's where we need now to, put, uh, to apply our faith. Because when we apply our faith, then we will be able to exercise that faith. And the word of God in Hebrews 11 verse 6 says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we need to be people who desire to please God who decide to bring honor and glory to his holy name. 
So Jesus came from, uh, 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 went to his uh, hometown in Nazareth. Uh, and that is in Matthew 13, verse 58. And there is a, a very unfortunate scenario that is there. It says that, yes, we know that Jesus was full of power. But because of their unbelief, very few miracles happened in their hometown in Nazareth. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. Because it will be men and women who walk in, uh, in faith. And uh, obedience leads us to our opportunities as we prepare, uh, as God prepares divine setups for our breakthrough. Sometimes it just requires that uh, you are challenged maybe even to do something by, your server, uh, by, by bishop or through the delegated uh, authority. And you accept that because uh, God, uh, God is the one who has placed them here for a purpose at a time like this. But when you obey, you don't know what is ahead of you. And there are two quick scriptures that I would like to, uh, to, to, uh, to comment because uh, to show that God indeed prepares divine setups for a breakthrough as we obey. And the first one is in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, which talks about that uh, Kish, who was the father of Saul, the donkeys got lost, but uh, he sent the son Saul and one of the servants to search for the donkeys. But I would like verse 15 and 17 to see that indeed this was a divine setup. Verse 15 and 17. It, it says, now a day before Saul came, remember he was searching for the donkeys. The Lord had informed Saul of this saying. About this time tomorrow, I'll send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him as the leader of my people Israel, and you'll save my people from the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon the distress of my people, because their cry for help has come to me. When, Saul saw, uh, uh, when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, there is a man whom I spoke to you. This one shall rule over my people as their king. So, yes, uh, Saul was searching for the donkey, but it was a divine setup. What unlocked that was his obedience to his father. And the same scenario also happened in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 17 to 23. 1 Samuel 17, 23. And also here, David also obeyed the father. He says, then Jesse said to uh, David, his son, Take your brothers uh, an ephah um, uh, of this roasted grain and, then, uh, and these ten loaves of bread and run quickly to the camp of your brothers. Also take these ten cuts of cheese to the, uh, to the commander of the unit. Uh, see how your brothers are doing and bring back news of them. Now these are, uh, these, uh, these are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of uh, 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 Gerah fighting with the Philistines. So David got up early in the morning, left the frog in, with the keeper, picked up the provisions, and went just as Jesse had directed him. And he came to the encampment as the army was going out in the battle formation, shouting the battle cry. Israel and, and Philistines drew up in battle formation, again, uh, army against army. Then uh, David left his provisions in the care of the supply keeper and ran to the ranks and came and greeted his brothers. Verse 23 is key. He, uh, as he was talking with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine uh, uh, of Gath, uh, named Goriath, was coming up from the army of the Philistine, and he spoke these same words again. Remember, he was uh, challenging to be given someone who would be able to fight him. And if, they, if he wins, they will be their slaves. If uh, they are defeated, they will be also their, be, be their slaves. But the last few words are very important. After he repeated th that, those challenge, uh, the word of God says, and David had him. And when David had him, David was provoked in his spirit. So uh, in your own time, you can look at chapter 16. And in chapter 16, that's where David was anointed as king of, uh, of Israel. And he was, he was being anointed because Saul, Saul had disobeyed. Uh, but uh, the scripture says, I think it's verse 13 there, that he was anointed and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. But in the next verse, which I think is verse 14, it says that, uh, the spirit of the Lord got out of Saul. So now the situation that was there, the army, or, uh, the, the, the army of Israel, or uh, uh, the, the armies of Israel, there were lions which were led by a sheep. But now David, who is anointed, came, and now it was now a lion who is anointed, a lion who was reading now the lions. There is a difference. It's better even a lion to read the sheep than a, a sheep to read the lions. So there was a change. But, and we know that how that story uh, went. 
uh, they were able to have uh, victory because uh, of obedience. So uh, we need to be keen to listen to the Lord and obey uh, his instruction because obedience is better than sacrifice. The second thing, we need to desire for our eyes to be opened. We need to desire for our eyes to be opened to see what the Lord has in store for us. And in that uh, Genesis 13, verse 14 to 15, there we see what we read as our key verse, uh, Genesis 13, 14 to 15, uh, the Lord instructed Abraham, and we can just read, after Lot had gone, and the Lord said to Abraham, look as far as you can see. So the word is, look as far as you can see, in every direction, north and south, east and west. Verse 15, I'm giving all this land as far as you can see, to you and to your descendants as a permanent possession. So, so, uh, so Abraham was to look and see. And the Lord assured him that he was to give him the land. So until you see it, you are not entitled to it. You have got to see it to have it. And, that, and that's, the way vision, uh, vision, uh, that's the way vision is. For example, if you have a vision, other people may, may misunderstand you. Because it's not them who saw the picture. But you who saw the picture, you will be stubborn because you, you saw, for example, that, uh, uh, that thing which is completed. But the others, the, uh, you did not see the processes. Others may be discouraged, but because you saw that vision, you are able to soldier on because you saw the vision. And we know of the instance in 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16 to 17, uh, 2 Kings 6 to 7, 16 to 17, and this is where uh, Elisha prayed for his... Uh, um, assistant, when they saw that they had been uh, surrounded by the enemy. But in verse 17, the word of God says, And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the, eye, the servant's eyes, he looked, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. You know you can be able to look and fail to see. And somebody said, uh, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Some people look, but others see. So, and that's why we need to pray that God may open our eyes, that we may see that which he has in store for, 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 for us. But when we use, we use the word of seeing, we are talking about that God is going to give us insight. God is going to give us insight. And uh, uh, I was looking at the meaning for insight, and the meaning for insight is the capacity, the capacity to gain an accurate and deep understanding of someone or something. Insight is the capacity to gain an accurate and deep understanding of someone or something. And I like what Bishop Mark always likes saying. He usually says that a man or a woman will never be lost in the crowd when they walk in the revelation of the word of God. So yes, we may hear the word of God, but do you get a revelation? But a man or a woman will not be lost in the crowd when they walk in the revelation knowledge of, of the word of God. Praise the name of Jesus. And that, that's why there is this song that says, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. And one of the desires, uh, uh, the, the singer says, To see you high and lifted up. So if we see the Lord high and lifted up, then we'll be bold because we know that uh, 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 he's going to, uh, to see us through. And the scripture in Psalms 145, uh, 147 verse, uh, verse 5 says, that great is our Lord, exalted in power. His understanding has no limit. That is our God. That great is our Lord, exalted in power. His understanding has no limit. And when I think about the new frontiers and territories without limit, the scripture that comes to my mind is Psalms 1 verse 19. Psalms 1 verse 19. And I would like it projected in the NIV. And uh, it's usually a blessing. But it usually says, that Psalms 1 verse 19 says, How abundant are the good things you, that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge on, on you. So uh, this I would like uh, put it in NIV. In NIV. Uh, in NIV. Yes, let's all read one, two, three. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. So, brethren, let's, put, uh, let's continue to make the Lord our refuge and our fortress. 
and, it, uh, and uh, uh, there is a lot that has installed, uh, in store for us that even others will see and glorify his name. The third thing that we need to do uh, is that the, the, uh, we need to know there is work for us to, to do to build our capacity to receive more. There is work for us to do to build our capacity to receive more. And in Genesis 13:17, uh, that can be projected in the uh, New King James Version, uh, the first two words are key. And I remember even the speaker on that of November mentioned them. And he said, arise, uh, in, uh, in New King James Version, brings it better. Yes. It says, arise, walk in the land through its rent and its wind, for I'll give it to you. So there, we are, the, even the, the speaker was reminding us that there is still some work for us to do. It's for us to arise and walk. And what we read in Joshua 13 verse 1, uh, Joshua has been reminded by the Lord, there remains very much land yet to be possessed. And in the scripture that we have read also in Isaiah 54, but specifically verse 2 and 3, it says, enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the de uh, desolate cities inhabited. So from those three scriptures, what, what I'm, I'm picking and what we need to pick, it's, it's we to arise and walk. So there is work for us to do. It's for us to explore the new frontiers. It's we to conquer and possess the new territories. As we enlarge the place of our tent, stretching out the curtains of our dwelling, we will not spare. We will raven our cords. And when we talk about cords, we are talking about the, the, the ropes, the, te the, 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 the tent ropes, <clears throat> and strengthen our stakes. And when we are talking about uh, stakes, we will make our pegs firm in the ground as we expand in every direction in Jesus' name. So building capacity is very important. And uh, we speak this even from the parable, uh, the parable of the talents in uh, Matthew 25. Matthew 25, I'll read just a few verses, 15, and then 20 to 23. And, uh, and uh, this scripture shows us the importance of building capacity. But in that, uh, verse 15 says, And to one he, he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on his journey. Here, people were given, uh, people had different capacities. There was one that was given five talents. There was another one who was given two talents. There was one who was given one talent, according to their ability. Then in verse 20, it says, uh, uh, that is Matthew 25, it says, So he who have received five talents came and brought, yeah, that, that is better, yeah, to one who gave five talents, to another two, uh, no, uh, let's go to 20, 2023. 2023. 20, okay. So uh, it says, uh, so he who have received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. Uh, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servants. But the next uh, words are key. You are faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler of many, uh, of many things. So that is repeated even for the person who came, uh, who had two talents and already had uh, additional more. He was told that you have been faithful of a few things. I'll make you ruler of many things. So none of us can claim to be without opportunity to build capacity because the Lord avails opportunity to each one of us to grow. Yours may not be five. Yours may be two or one. But all of us has an, a, a capacity to, uh, has an opportunity to build Capacity, capacity. Are you building capacity? Are you a good tither? Because if you are faithful with, with, with the retro, God is the one who is going to multiply and give you even more. So in the responsibility that you have been given, so are you faithful in what you have been given? Or you desire that bigger role, but you are not faithful in the small role that you have been given? And even in Luke 12, uh, 48, Luke 12, 48, uh, there is something also there we can pick. It says, for everyone uh, to whom much is given, for, uh, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. So we need to know that uh, enlargement of our capacity is a process. It takes time and work. It may be painful. 
we will be stretched beyond our comfort zone. And one of the greatest enemies of success is, uh, is comfort. But there is a, uh, something that uh, David, in Psalms 4 verse 1, uh, in, in uh, King James Version, brings, uh, brings it better. And it says in Psalms 1, uh, 4 verse 1, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enraged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. So here David was saying, uh, in, in Psalms uh, 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 chapter 4 verse 1, that you, uh, he was telling the Lord, you have enraged me when I was in distress. So when there is also stretching, let's run from every opportunity, uh, from every experience that we come across. And I, I love the, the example that Bishop, Bishop Jimmy always gives us. And most of us, we have seen goats or sheep being slaughtered somewhere. And he always reminds us that you would like that, uh, 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 that skin to be helpful to you, when it's wet, you need to put it in pegs to stretch it. And when it dries, it never shrinks again. So, yes, it may be painful to stretch, but when it is stretched, it's for our own good. And even God knew, even the Israel also needed to build capacity. And if the media can be able to, uh, to put this, that is Exodus 23, Exodus 23, 28 to 30. Exodus 23, especially in the uh, new, uh, NIV, uh, Exodus 23, 28 to 30. But uh, here he, they were told that, uh, yes, uh, they are not going to be allowed to go to the land uh, at the same... Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I will hope... To, yeah, in NIV, NIV. Let's see it in NIV. It brings it better. Okay. Uh, let's read this. I, uh, I will send the hornets ahead of you to drive the Hivites, Canaanites, and Hittites out of your way. 29 but I will not drive them out in a single year because the land would become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Verse 30. Retro by retro, I will drive them out before you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. So even here, God also wanted the Israelites also, the children of Israel, to build capacity just as we are also expected also to build capacity. And the fourth point, we should not fear. We should not fear because we have the assurance that shame will not be our portion. We should not fear because we have the assurance that shame will not be our portion. Uh, and uh, as Sadika here was uh, reading us in the time of, uh, of praise and worship, there is this song that we all praised and we are, uh, it was uh, very uplifting. Umeni Arisha. Hmm? And uh, when and, and I spoke that even in the first service, and that uh, when I hear that word, the scripture that comes to mind is Psalms 34 verse 5. Psalms 34 verse 5, and uh, it's my favorite. And it says that those that look unto the Lord are radiant; their faces are never covered with shame. Mm. So when we look unto the Lord, our faces will never be covered with shame. And in fact, in that Psalms 34, from verse 4, David said, I sought the Lord, and he delivered me from all my fears, not some of my fears. And then verse 5, he says that those that look unto the Lord are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Praise the name of Jesus. But I said the three scriptures are, are what are, are, is our main reference. So let's go to Isaiah 54, uh, verse 4. And uh, uh, in the part, uh, part 8, it says, Isaiah 54, verse 4, it says, Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. And we will not be put to shame because the Lord is on our side. That's why we need to continue to look up to him, because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. We will not be afraid because the Lord will be with us, just as he has been with us for the last 40 years. And during, on that 3rd of November, we are being reminded by the speaker of Deuteronomy, 2 verse 7, Deut Deuteronomy 2 verse 7, where the word of God says, for the Lord your God has blessed you, in, 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 uh, have blessed you, um, uh, the Lord, uh, for the Lord your God has blessed you in everything you have done. He has watched over every step through this great, great wilderness. During these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you have lacked nothing. Even for us, we are being reminded. The Lord has been with us and we can attest of that. It doesn't matter when you came to DCIKZ, 
But indeed, even when you had the testimonies that Bishop uh, has continued to give us and gave us that day, we can all, all, all of us look back in faith and in gratitude and testify of the goodness and faithfulness of our God. Because he's a good God. Because God is on our side, then uh, we, are, we are... So, victory is assured when we have the right backing. Victory is assured when we have the right backing. What is your backing? So, for us as DCKZ, our backing is in the Lord. Because he's the one who has assured us that we are, going to, uh, we are set up for new frontiers and even new territories. And uh, uh, two scriptures just to encourage us. Uh, one is uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. 1 Samuel 17, 45. And this is David, after he heard those words, uh, the challenge that came from Gregoria, and the word of God says, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts and God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. So David was not going in his power. But he was going, uh, uh, he knew that God was, uh, was going in the name of the Lord, knowing that the Lord will be with him. And David is a one man, is one man I, I like. Because in most cases, even when he was standing by Saul, he said that God was with him when he killed the lion and the bear. And in Psalms, uh, in, in Psalms 18, verse 28 to 29, I love what David brings out there. And usually it says that, O oh Lord, you keep my ram burning. You turn my darkness into light. But in verse 29, he makes a profound statement and he says that with your help, I can advance against a troop. With you, my God, I can scale over a wall. So when we are with our God, when God is on our side, we are assured of the victory. Victory is assured when we have the right backing. But also there is also a, a very powerful words uh, from King Hezekiah in 2 Chronicle, 2 Chronicle 32, 7 and 8. 2 Chronicle 32, 7 and 8. And the word of God says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him, for there is a greater power with us. Even for us, there is a greater power with us. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is our Lord, is, our, is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what King Ezekiel of Judah said. Even for, in, the, in the after 40, as we explore the new frontiers, as we conquer and possess the new territories, we need to know that, we need to, we need to remember that greater is the power with us. For the Lord, is, uh, the Lord our God is with us to help us and to fight our, our battles. We also uh, have the word of God to carry us through. For he, his promises are yea and amen. amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And the fifth point, which is the last point, is that we will sing new songs. We will sing new songs Songs of victory, because the Lord will fulfill what he has promised. We will sing new songs, songs of victory, because, uh, uh, because the Lord will fulfill what he has promised. The Lord our God remains the ancient of days, who is forever faithful. He remains the great I am, not the great I was or the great uh, I'll be. And God continues to reveal himself in his various dimensions, in our different situations and circumstances. Where we require healing, he continues to reveal himself as God, our healer. Where we require provision, he continues to reveal himself as God, our provider. So where we require victory, he continues to be God, our banner, Jehovah Nisi, who grants us victory. So what, uh, uh, to David, even when he was testifying to, uh, to Saul, when Saul told him that he could not face the giant, he reminded Saul that he has seen God in his dimension as a rescuer. So he can be your rescuer. I don't know your situation. He can be your deliverer. He was a deliverer to the children of Israel. So he remains the great I am. And he can reveal himself in his various dimensions. Above all, God is the promise keeper. He is the promise keeper. And uh, even as, it was, uh, even as the, the speaker uh, declared upon us as a, a ministry, that may all that, uh, my, my desire even for us as individuals and family, may all that God has purposed for each one of us cause it to come to pass in full and without any form of delay in Jesus' name. Because I love, I love the word of God in Job, uh, Job 36, verse 5, and I like it in the NIV version. It says that God is mighty, and he despises no man. God is mighty and firm in his purpose. Amen. So may all that he has purpose for us as a ministry, uh, as individuals, as family, families come to pass for his glory. And that's what Dave, uh, Joshua, Joshua declared of the Lord in Joshua 21, 43 to 45. 
Joshua 22, uh, 21, verse 43 to, uh, 43, uh, 43 to 45. And this is where he was saying that, indeed, the promise that God gave to his servant uh, Abraham has come to, uh, to, to pass. It says, so the Lord gave to Israel all the land which he had sworn to give to their fathers. And they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all he had sworn to their fathers. And not a man of all their, their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered, uh, delivered all their enemies into their hand. Not a word filled of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the house of Israel. All came to pass. May that be our story in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, in 1 Samuel 17, you read in your own time, 1 Samuel 17, 51 to 53, uh, this is where David was able to run and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it and, uh, and killed, uh, uh, killed Goliath and took the, uh, uh, picked the, the head. And the word of God says that the, uh, the, when, when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they freed free away. But the word of God in verse 52 says, now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted. Arose and shouted. Uh, uh, 52, yeah. Uh, now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley of the gates of uh, Ekron. And, uh, and the wounded of the Israel fell along the road to Sh uh, Sh Sharin, even as far as Gad and uh, Ekron. So, but what we see, these people were very timid. They were quaking with fear, and nobody could dare uh, to challenge Goriath. But now we see them shouting and pursuing the Philistines. The shout that was there, it was not a shout of fear, but it was a shout of victory. Because our God remains our song changer. He's the one who gives us new songs, songs of victory. So these people who are timid, even they could not shout. But now they are shouting because he has, they have seen the victory of the Lord. And as I conclude, uh, in Psalms 40, verse 1 and 3, Psalms 40, verse 1 uh, and 3, uh, the psalmist says that I waited patiently for the Lord. He cried uh, to me and heard my cry. He also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the mere uh, cray, and set my feet upon a rock and established my, uh, my steps. Verse 3, he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear, and will trust in the Lord. Our God remains our song changer. He's able to give us new songs, songs of victory, that many will see, fear the Lord, and put their trust in God, because he's, he's, he's a promise keeper. He's the one who causes things to come to pass for his glory. So as I conclude, on that of November, we were reminded that after 40, there is the 41. After 40, there are new frontiers, new territories, new growth, new opportunities, fresh dreams, fresh uh, direction, new horizon, fresh dimensions. But as we have seen, there are some expectations from us. We need to be keen to listen to the Lord and obey his instruction. So we need to put our faith to work. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Two, we need to desire to see uh, our eyes opened to see what God has in store for us. And we, we, we saw that Psalms that 1 verse 19, how it reminds us that how abundant are the good things that the Lord has stored, uh, that you have stored up for thee that fear you, which you bestow, uh, for, uh, you, you bestow in, the, uh, in the sight of all, them that make you their refuge. And we saw it's good that you make the Lord our refuge. And then we saw there is work for us to do, to build our capacity to receive more. So they will be stretching to build capacity. Whatever ritual you have, it's good you be faithful so that you can receive more. And then we saw that we should not fear because we have the assurance that shame will not be our portion. Because those that look unto the Lord are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. And finally, we will sing new songs, songs of victory, because the Lord will fulfill what he has promised. Above all, it's, uh, uh, our walk with God needs to be right. We are righteous, not because of what we have done, but because of, uh, 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 of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Jesus, as he, he declared that it's finished, he was declaring we have the victory. He did not say that I'm finished. He said it's finished. Hmm? Uh, it's important. He, see, he did not say that uh, I'm finished. He said it, uh, it is finished. And that was his mission, to come so that, uh, uh, that, that we may be saved. And that's why the word of God in Ephesians 2, 8 uh, uh, says, For by grace 
We have been saved through faith, and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we are saved by the grace of God through faith. And this day, if you, have not know, if you do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, you can say yes to Jesus. Jesus he, uh, saves, he sustains, and he satisfies. And most of us here, we can say that indeed we have tested of the Lord. And we have seen that indeed he's good. And that, uh, so would you like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life this day? And this will be a turning point in your life. Because he's a good God. We have tested of him. And we know that he's good. That he saves, he sustains, and he satisfies. Are you there? Even after this, you can see any of the ushers of the readers here. And you are going to be assisted. I would like to request us to stand even as we make the closing prayer.